Hello everybody, so welcome back to the English Law Channel after quite a long absence. So I'm going to be talking about tort today, so that's wrong. This is civil law um, as opposed to criminal law. I know civil law can mean Roman law, but no, we're looking at the common law system, the laws of England and Wales. Um, so somebody sometimes has his or her, her rights breached, and it's a non-criminous matter, and therefore a remedy is, is, is required um, because someone's interests have been um, infringed. So um, the infringement of such rights is called a tort. This is tortious action, um, and, and there is a cause of action, as in you can take legal action on this basis, go to the courts to seek redress for tortious conduct. The tort visa is the one who's committed the, the, the tortious act. Um, anyway, so there's, there's certain rights, certain interests that have been invaded by somebody, and then there's a duty and an obligation on the defendant not to do so. The courts can put it right. So. Um, and there are all sorts of different torts created for different reasons. Um, so uh, there's um, inter alia, there's negligence, there's nuisance, trespass of the person. There is the law of defamation, which includes both um, libel and slander. We'll come on to that. Protecting um, your bodily integrity and so forth. Protecting your reputation from being traduced, uh, from your, your commercial interests, your proprietorial interests, and so forth. So, um, yeah, so uh, physical integrity, that's about negligence public nuisance and trespass to the person, the person meaning the human body. Interest in property, this is about negligence, again there's public nuisance, private nuisance, there's also trespass to land. Remember in England Wales, trespass to the land is usually not criminous. There are exceptions for sort of royal palaces and army bases and so forth. Um, their are interests in the use of enjoyment of land, and these are protected by various torts, negligence, public and private nuisance, as well as trespass to land. Um, reputational damage is protected by the law of defamation. There's also privacy, and that's protected from, from, from breach. Uh, there's misuse of private information, that, that's a tort. So tort interests are different interests, and um, protected against people um, wrongfully interfering. And the, these interferences are, com are compensable. So um, damages are awarded if, if harm has been um, uh, unjustifiably um, sustained. So uh, occasionally a court will or issue an order to say that the, the uh, defendant must cease and desist from engaging in such tortious conduct. For instance, when an indirect interference unreasonably impacts somebody's usage of land, and that would be a nuisance. A court order could be issued by the, the, the um, court to the defendant. This is called an injunction. Injunctions are usually given when there's nuisance, but a party who wants to stop something being prevented, which, it claims to, which is claimed to be defamatory, is unlikely to be successful in getting this injunction. These, these um, injunctions are very rarely issued. They can be in, issued in privacy cases, like there's a certain um, uh, England footballer who's a dogger, and there's a super injunction, you can't mention that. Or Boris Johnson about 12 years ago, when he had a love child with some interior designer, and he sought an injunction to prevent the publication of, of this information, but the judge threw it out, said there's no reason why the free press is not allowed to publish this matter of, of um, historical record, a public record, that yes, that an infant was born and was sired by for Boris Johnson. If Boris Johnson finds that embarrassing, tough. The press has the right to report the news. This is a matter of news. Some people will, will judge him for that, more likely to vote against him, and that's up to them, it's worth them knowing. Other people won't care, will still vote for him, fine, but the public has a right to know. There's not a sufficiently good reason that he finds this electorate disadvantageous. So bear in mind that tort doesn't protect, protect every interest. There are situations where a loss or harm is sustained due to somebody else's behaviour, and there's no right to sue because that interest is not um, defended by the law. For instance, damnum sin in Uria. Um, as in damage without injury. So Bradford Corporation and Pickles 1895, um, which went to the appellate court. So the um, a plaintiff, he was supplying water to Bradford, a northern English city. The defendant was Mr. Pickles, and he owned the land um, through which the water trickled. And through these um, unclear um, under, underground channels, they weren't d d delineated. And um, the, the, the water flowed onto land which was owned by Bradford City Corporation. So the City Corporation, as in City Council, refused to purchase this land at the um, hugely jacked up price which Mr. Pickles demanded. Therefore, he commenced drainage and that diverted the flow of water away from the, the, the City Council's reservoirs and there was a diminution in water supply. The House of Lords ruled that Mr. Pickles hadn't committed a tortious act since the corporation, though it sustained damage, damnum, 
and it couldn't show that they had any right to the water. Pickles was within his rights to divert the flow of the water, as in they should have purchased it. Might seem unfair, but anyway, that was the law of the land. There was no injury in Uria. Okay, so fault. We've also got to look out to see if there's any fault. There are instances of no fault tort liabilities. Or was there intentional carelessness on the part of the defendant in the tort action? Well, this, is, uh, this carelessness or intention must be demonstrated by the claimant. We used to say plaintiff in the old days. Carelessness is a type of, of fault in tort. And that's what the tort of negligence is the main one in liability. But intention can be, uh, must be proven in relation to certain torts. For instance, trespass to the person. The Consumer Protection Act of 1986 said there's a strict liability for defective products which cause personal injury, as an in injury to the human body um, and uh, damage to private property. Therefore, those who are injured by defective product don't need to show fault on behalf of whoever produced the product. So what are the purposes um, of tort? Well, the main one is to um, provide a, rem a remedy to an injured, injured claimant, um, pecuniary compensation. And there are two main ways for doing this um, if there's been an actual injury, actionable injury or loss. This is uh, called loss shifting and loss spreading. So loss shifting is where the loss that the um, innocent claimant has sustained is shifted onto the defendant by obliging the defendant to pay damages. Loss spreading is a principle whereby um, uh, compensation, uh, there's a sort of called distributive justice. We, um, we spread out the losses amongst the whole community um, and therefore there's compulsory insurance. This is what Tony Weir had to say about it in a casebook on tort. The plaintiff is asking for money, damages, generally has been hurt in one way or another, and is claiming as compensation for harm suffered sometimes with a bit extra if the defendant behaved very badly. Though occasionally and increasingly he is more intent on vindication or explanation rather than compensation. Usually he is claiming that harm has been, harm has been wrongfully caused. Accordingly, we may say that the primary function of this area of social regulation we call tort is to determine when one person must pay compensation for a harm wrongfully caused. Um, there are various um, uh, mentalities in relation to tort. There's malice, intention and negligence. If a tort doesn't require any particular state of mind, it's said to be a strict tort. So justice is a vital function of the law and has to recognise where a wrong has been committed, um, this must be addressed and this must be rectified. So compensation is the main way that um, a tort functions. It isn't the only one. It's also to deter people from committing to torts in the first instance and to provide um, a retributory justice where they have um, happened. Glanville Williams wrote an excellent article, The Aims of Tort Law, in 1951, it appeared in the Law Journal. Um, and you, you can read that in Lunny and Oliphant's book, General Introduction, The Aims of Tort Law. So um, tort, uh, it, it does have some commonalities with, with criminal law and contract law. So how, how is it comparable with contract law? Tort's an area where there are certain obligations, it's like in contract, but unlike contract, um, is seeking to enforce a single obligation of promise. The wrongs of tort are broader. There's another difference between court and contract, and that's the law of tortious obligation is set by law. If I'm driving my car and I knock you over, I'm liable to compensate you because there's a duty to drive with due care and attention and so on, and I haven't specifically promised to you that I wouldn't do that. So in contract, it's parties who, through their, their, their parleying, have come up with the content of the contract. Um, and a breach of contract means that you've broken your obligation that, that you freely undertook. Um, if I promise to sell you something and I don't deliver on what I promise to sell you by a certain date, then I'm in breach of promise and then you can take action. But this, 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 this distinction is not absolute. Okay, there, there are areas of tort law which have um, grown out of a voluntary assumption of responsibility, negligent misstatements, for instance. So there's not such a hard and fast um, difference between um, tort and contract. Thanks for watching.